I've been an undercover Muslim all the time and they want our land. I have a handful of friends that were in and out of jail. So they spent their 20s basically in and out of jail. It would be quite the extensive scam, if you really think about it, to do a YouTube channel for eight years. Muslim community, it was very brutal in Germany. And then, oh, oopsie, I saw Andrew Tate converting to Islam and now I'm gonna try that too. Yeah, anyways, okay, let me jump into my yeah, story. I'm gonna keep it as a lot of people already know you in my audience, yeah. Core. I mean, you're very well known. A exactly. lot of people have been looking forward to this, but yeah. for the people who don't or need a sure, reminder, sure, sure. please. And on my channel, obviously, people know my story as well. So, just in a nutshell, because the question is, of course, how I found Islam ultimately. And because you mentioned my older videos as well, I saw that somebody was posting that I've been an undercover Muslim all the time. And I say Muslim because that's how they pronounce it, right? I've been an undercover Muslim. And this whole thing on YouTube here was just a charade in order to give dawah indirectly. And that is absolutely <laughs> insane, of course, because you can still see my old videos up. As I said, I deleted a few, but still you can see them. When I was an Orthodox Christian, this is, I think, by now five, six years ago, when I was into psychedelics, shamanism, all of those things you can still see on my channel, right? Yeah. And it would be quite the extensive scam, if you really think about it, to do a YouTube channel for eight years, pretending I'm a vegan at first, <laughs> then a carnivore, then some new agey Buddhist, whatever, right? Then to go into Orthodox Christianity and then to get to Islam in order to give dawah. I mean, come on, man, there are better ways to do that, right? And if you want to do a money grab, there are better ways to do that as well. It wouldn't take eight years, you know, running a YouTube channel. But anyway, so essentially my journey started really 2014 when I left Germany. Germany is the country that I grew up in. However, my parents are from the Balkan, northern Macedonia, and they are Orthodox Christians to this very day. However, they grew up in communism, and communism is essentially a political movement that wanted to eradicate God completely off the Balkans. They succeeded as well in the Soviet Union, and they succeeded partially in Turkey. Albania was the first atheist country in the world. They declared it. Now as a Muslim country again, alhamdulillah. Wow. But anyways, that being said, they grew up as Orthodox Christians, culturally identified, but they didn't really know about their doctrine. So therefore, sure, we would celebrate Christmas, we would celebrate Eastern. On that note, Orthodox Christians celebrate Eastern and Christmas on different dates than the rest of the world. And yeah, I felt very, very identified being a Christian because I've been told that the Balkan has been freed of the Muslims and they've been waging war against us for centuries. Which is not completely untrue, because the Balkan was under the Ottoman Empire, under Ottoman rule, under Muslim rule. And so therefore I've been told, okay, the Turks are the bad guys, and everybody that is a Muslim is automatically a Turk. And now again this sounds crazy, but it's actually partially true. Because during that time, people only knew Muslims as Turks, and everybody on the Balkan that would actually convert to Islam would fight on the Turkish side, would fight in the Turkish army, so to speak, and learn Turkish by default. And therefore, they really saw it as a national traitor, basically, traitor, that accepted a new nationality, not so much the religion. So this is what I've been told growing up. And then when I was roughly 15 years old, a new war broke out, this time against the Albanians. First, the Serbs fought the Albanians, then the Macedonians started fighting the Albanians. And here it was again. The Muslims are attacking us, us Orthodox Christians. We are benevolent, we're peaceful, and they want our land. This is how it was told to me, right? Yeah. Okay. So now growing up in Germany, knowing this, knowing that Islam is this war religion and they just want to destroy everything we got, <laughs> I was very skeptical when it comes down to Muslims. And, matter of fact, being surrounded by many different ethnicities, I grew up in a low-income area in Germany. I was surrounded by Moroccans, Algerians, Tunisians, Turks, Kurds, and whatnot. And then growing up, they all started getting into dodgy businesses, selling drugs, pimping, etc. And they were in and out of jail, a lot of violence. So don't get me wrong, I was involved in such things as well when I was younger. However, when it came down to, let's say, physical alterations, altercations, I would fight. It would be maybe a fist fight. 
but I wouldn't go to an extent that I saw within the Muslim community. It was very brutal in Germany. Stabbings, shootings. It was very rough. These are your so, friends or acquaintances or just friends, friends and friends of friends. Yeah. Wow. So I have a handful of friends that were in and out of jail. So they spent their twenties basically in and out of jail. Anyhow, so seeing that then, I said to myself, okay, this just confirms it yet again. This is a violent religion, obviously. And they were telling me about Islam, but I didn't listen. I said, I don't want any part of this. I'm looking for something peaceful, something spiritual. This is definitely the opposite. So I never looked into it, right? And this is why I put Islam essentially not only on the back burner, but completely out of sight, out of mind. I didn't want to look into this religion because for me, it was just violence and it has nothing to do with God. That's how I perceived it. So yeah. I actually... I can hated Islam. I hated Islam. And this is really important to say, you know, again, here the undercover dawah, it is very crucial to understand that I don't come from a, let's say, secularized household. And then, oh, whoopsie, I saw Andrew Tate converting to Islam, and now I'm going to try that too. No, I come from an Orthodox Christian family. Everybody in my family is opposed to Islam. This is the history that I've been told. And I grew up in a surrounding where I had every reason to hate Islam. And this is how I perceived it. So anyways, I was involved in shady businesses myself. In 2014, I just said to myself, I cannot be in this environment anymore. Now I have to leave. I have to see the world. I have to see essentially what the rest of the world is about. I'm not going to achieve what I want to achieve in this environment here in Germany. And so I left. I sold my car. I sold my flat, everything. And I just started traveling. And at first I went to Australia, and in Australia I wanted to kind of humble myself, and I did that through construction work. So I just started working on construction sites, doing very honest work, handiwork, laboring, because I never did that before. My father was a handyman, but I never really worked with my hands, and I found that very important to humble myself through physical need, means. And so I did that for a while, I just worked on construction sites, and I saved a lot of money for the time being. And this is how I financed then traveling further. And I've traveled to Indonesia, Bali, to Malaysia, Vietnam, Thailand, obviously needless to say, New Zealand. Then I went to South America as well. In South America, I went to the Amazon jungle to drink ayahuasca with the shamans. All right, I did that as well. In Thailand, as you did as well, I spent time with the Buddhist monks. I fasted. Actually, I made it extra hard for myself. I went on a 10-day water fast. Ooh. And even the monks asked me, why are you doing that? You don't have to, right? I'm like, no, nah, I really want to have the experience. And the first day I was still talking, but then I went on a silent vow, silent fast as well. So I didn't talk. <laughs> I didn't eat. <laughs> and I was just sweeping the floors in the monastery. <laughs> and I'm telling you, by day four, I was convinced that I'm going to die. But I didn't want to break my non-speaking. And yeah, <laughs> I was just freaking did you out. Get, did, you, did you go all 10 days? Yeah, 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 I went all 10 days. I lost 15 kg it was terrible <laughs> i did a three-day water fast when i was in in uh, vietnam and that was yeah that was intense i can't imagine 10. it's tough yeah and back then i was pretty ripped to be honest so there was not much body fat to be burned so i just burned through my muscle as well at the end of the water fast on day 10 i remember i couldn't sit on my butt anymore because my muscles were so atrophied that i was sitting on my bones that's how fast my body ate itself because my metabolism was pretty fast at the time. Yeah. Yeah. You looked yeah. pretty lean. Your old videos of you working out and stuff. Yeah. Sure. And yeah. yeah, now I'm old now with that. But anyway, so throughout the travels, essentially, I got away from Orthodox Christianity. Not that I was very, very practicing before that. As I said, I was culturally identified. We we're going to church for Christmas and for Eastern. But now I really want to find the truth. And through the psychedelics, I came to the conclusion that religion is essentially man-made. And there are many different religions, of course, everybody has their interpretation. But the truth is not something that you interpret, the truth just is. And therefore the truth can be only received on an experiential level. That's what I came to the conclusion. So through meditation, through fasting, through psychedelics, you will receive it firsthand and then you know. And nobody can tell you otherwise. Why just read those old books, right? This is just another man that wrote it. So this is the conclusion that I came to, and this is why I dived even further into the psychedelics and shamanism ultimately. So I learned how to brew the ayahuasca. I learned how to do the rituals, the ceremonies and whatnot. 
yeah, yeah, I was deep, deep in it, right? And now looking back, I developed somewhat of a spiritual ego because you feel so free of ego, but at the same time, you don't recognize that your ego is now pretending to be egoless. I hope this makes sense. Yeah, it, you really it, it does. feel as if you got rid of everything, but it is the opposite. And now you are kind of pretentious for the outside world, but in your mind, you're the enlightened one. Right? And I recognize that, thank God, after a while. And I realized, man, this is not really leading anywhere. So what needs to be still adjusted? And this is when I went into the fasts. I was vegan during that time as well. So shame on me. Four years, I was eating only a vegan diet. Oh, wow. I was two years strictly raw vegan, where I wasn't cooking my food at all. And I was one year a fruitarian, where I was just eating fruits. Insane. So during the time in the Amazon jungle, actually, I'm kind of a bit back and forth here because it's so long in the past, but I was only living off the fruits of the Amazon jungle. I was drinking the coconuts and I was drinking rainwater and I was brewing the ayahuasca. So that was my diet. No meat, no nothing else. I was obviously severely malnourished during that time and super skinny and on psychedelics. <laughs> so maybe not the most trustworthy source of information. But yeah, during that time, I thought I cracked the holy grail and i understand everything now you know and you felt great but at anyways, the time like spiritually i would say that i felt deeply deeply disturbed but at the same time i felt this absolute rush of novelty yeah because i mean imagine you know you're in the amazon jungle with the indigenous people it was rain season as well. You're just in the open jungle. You hear animals everywhere. It's raining, pouring, thunderstorms, and you are high on ayahuasca. So it's a pretty amazing feeling. But it wasn't very sustainable. You know, so you know the saying, everything that goes up must come down. So psychedelics for me felt, in a sense, forced, almost like steroids in a way that you just force yourself to develop so much strength and then people come off it and they just lose all their size. So it felt like that, like spirituality on steroids. You just hijack your system, you get shot into the ninth dimension and then you come back and now you need to integrate, but you're still you. It wasn't really something that sustainably built your spiritual character because there was not a daily practice. As I mentioned, in Islam, you do have that, right? Yeah. So anyways, that being said, after all of that, I found myself feeling very, very lost because I tried it all, right? I read different religious books. I mean, Far Eastern religious books, Bhagavad Gita, etc. And I did the shamanism. I did the indigenous, tribal, paganistic religions, if you will. I did the meditation, all of those things. And now I feel absolutely crushed and I don't feel that I accomplished anything. How can that be, right? I traveled the world and I still feel not connected to God at all. And this is when I remembered, man, when I was a kid, everything was so easy. I was just laying in my bed, praying to God. That's it. I wasn't doing anything else. I was just praying to God directly. And I felt so connected and I felt that my prayers are heard. Yeah. So how do I get back to that state? And so the first step was to quit veganism, to reintroduce animal foods. And that brought me back quite a bit. It grounded me again. And then the next step was, of course, to look into religion. But because, as I said in the beginning, I, of course, already discarded Islam. So this wasn't an option for me. So the only option that I got was Orthodox Christianity. All right, guys, but this is it for today's video. If you liked it, leave the thumbs up, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Check out the links in the description box below to further support my work. Thank you very much for that. And as always, guys, may God bless you all. Much love and peace. <laughs>